In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Last Sunday, the Church introduced us in the Septuagesima season, which is a preparation to Lent. And uh, through the readings of the Breviary and of the Mass last week, the Church talked to us about the creation of Adam and Eve, the original sin, and the loss of paradise. And also how, after the original sin, God calls us again to holiness and eternal salvation. We have been given a second chance to go to heaven, although it is more difficult now than before the, the original sin. So last Sunday, St. Paul compared our life on earth to an Olympic game, a race. As, as getting the prize is possible only by making a lot of efforts during the competition, so, to, so winning the reward of, he, of heaven is possible only by making a lot of spiritual efforts and sacrifices during our life on earth. In the readings of the breviary of these current days, the Church makes us read the story of the children of, Ab of Adam and Eve. So today let us see the spiritual lessons which we can get from this passage of the Holy Scriptures, lessons uh, proper to help us to get ready for Lent, to have the proper dispositions for Lent. Adam and Eve after having been chased away from paradise, had their first children, Cain and Abel. Cain was a farmer and Abel a shepherd. Both of them used to offer sacrifices to God. Cain the products of his farm, Abel the, the sheep of his flock. And it is said in the Bible, that the Lord had respect to Abel and his offerings, but to Cain and his offerings he had no respect. Indeed, when we offer a sacrifice to God, he looks first at the intentions of our hearts. And if Abel's intentions were excellent, Cain's intentions were wicked. And Cain became envious to his brother to the extent to kill him. It was the first murder ever committed. Cain had children, and we read in the Holy Scripture that his children followed him in his wickedness. Murders, polygamy, pride, anger, revenge, looking after earthly things only. Men who pretended to live independently from God, far from God, are called by Holy Scripture the sons of men. On the other side, it is said in Holy Scripture that Eve brought forth a son and called his name Seth, saying, God has given me another seed for Abel whom Cain slew. But to Seth also was born a son, whom he called Enos. This man began to call upon the name of the Lord. <coughs> of the Lord. And we read how the children of Seth strived to live according to God's commandments. And even one of them, Enoch, was so holy that God took him alive out of this world and is preserving him somewhere for a mission at the end of the world. People who strived to keep God's commandments, to live according to God's commandments, are called by the Holy Scripture the sons of God. Now, which spiritual lesson can we draw for ourselves from this passage of the Holy Scripture? Firstly, the opposition between Cain and Abel marks clearly the division of mankind into two groups. The people rejecting God as their creator and sovereign master, the people living far away from God, and those, on the contrary, submitting themselves willingly to God. 
And this opposition between the sons of God and the sons of men, as it was before the flood, is a still a reality today. Mankind is divided into groups, two camps, which are radically opposed to each other. The camp of those keepi keeping God's commandments and the camp of those rejecting God and living far away from God, those pretending to be independent from God. We cannot belong to the two camps in the same time. Jesus said, he that is not with me is against me. So since we want to be the sons of God, the children of God, let us not be surprised at seeing against us the son of men, at seeing the devil and the world trying by all means to make us lose our Catholic faith, to, make, to pervert our Catholic morals. Let us not be surprised at uh, seeing physical and social persecutions against Catholics in the world throughout history. Secondly, there is the same opposition between the sons of God and the sons of men is an image of the interior conflict which we carry in ourselves since the original sin. Indeed, we have in ourselves like two camps. What St. Paul calls the flesh, which means all our disordered tendencies and passions urging us into sin. And what St. Paul calls the spirit, which means our good will to live according to God's commandments. You have heard in today's epistle how even the great St. Paul was subject to this interior conflict. The flesh and the spirit are irreconcilable. One must dominate the other. If the flesh dominates, we will go to hell at the end. If the spirit dominates with the help of God, we will go to, he to heaven at the end. So this is the first spiritual lesson. There is a spiritual war in us and outside us. And we are involved in both. We like it or not. It is like that. There is no neutral stand. Then it is said in Holy Scripture, men began to be multiplied upon the earth, and daughters were born to them. The sons of God seeing the daughters of men, that they were fair, took to themselves the wives of all which they chose. And the sons of God turned to be corrupted by reason of this close relationship which they contracted with the sons of men, so, mu so much that the Bible says, and the earth was corrupted before God and was filled with iniquity. Here there is a second reality. We have been so weakened by original sin that when we associate too much with wicked people, with sinners, we end up corrupted by them. And similarly, regarding the interior fights between the spirit and the flesh, which we carry in ourselves, if our spirit stops fighting the flesh and tries to cohabit with it peacefully, the flesh ends up taking over the spirit. This is an important truth to remember by your own. We are weak, incredibly weak, and our daily sins are just a perpetual reminder of this inner weakness we have. Does this mean that we cannot resist the temptations and that we fall necessarily into sin? No. Even, no, uh, after mentioning the corruption of the sons of God who associated with the sons of men, Holy Scripture says that among all the people, a man, one man, was found just. But Noah found the grace before the Lord. Noah was a just and perfect man in his generations. He walked with God. Noah found the grace before the Lord. 
These words of the Holy Ghost are not to be understood as if God, after looking attentively among all the people on earth, all of a sudden, happily discovered at least one man who kept the commandments. No. It is to be understood that God, while he lets other people fall into bigger and bigger sins, following their own wrong desire, God, by a special grace given to Noah, preserved him from the evil influences surrounding him, from the evil urges of his own concupiscence. And so, although Noah was living in the middle of a very wicked society, he was a just and perfect man. He walked with God. Our spiritual victory over the, the evil influences coming from the devil, coming from sinners, wicked people around us, coming from our own concupiscence, is uh, possible, but only by God's special protection and grace. Now, what must we do in order to get God's protection and grace? Our Lord Jesus said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. And elsewhere he said, I say to you, unless you shall do penance, you shall all perish. Prayer, which is a conversation with God to tell him that we love him, to a conversation with God to thank him, to ask for his forgiveness, for his help. Prayer and penance, which is a compensation which we offer to God for our sins, are the two main dispositions which God requests from us in order to sanctify us, in order to save us. Maybe sometimes you ask yourself, after death, will I go to heaven? Will I go to hell? Actually, you can answer yourself to these questions. Do you pray every day with a faith and a firm will to please God? Do you pray your rosary every day? If you say no or not really, well, the answer to the question is clear. You are on your way to hell, you like it or not. Saint Alphonsus Ligori said, who prays will be saved, who does not pray will be damned. Do you do penance regularly for your sins? Do you offer to God the sacrifice of giving up some food, of fasting, the sacrifice of charitable actions for the church or for the needy? Do you offer the sacrifice of attending the Mass during weekdays when you have the possibility? Do you go to confession regularly? Do you accept without complaining the, the, the sufferings, the trials of this life as a penance for your sins? If you say no to these questions, then the answer to the question, will I go to hell after death, is probably yes. Because in that case, you don't do penance. And our Lord said, unless you shall do penance, you shall all perish. Sometimes people say, the world we live in is so corrupt that it is impossible to resist temptations. Well. What a bad excuse to avoid the spiritual fight. The world at the time of Noah was very much corrupted. God destroyed it, killed everybody. And yet Noah was a just and perfect man in the middle of this corrupted world. Some people say, I feel too much weakness in, my, weakness. I feel too much weakness in myself. I cannot resist uh, the, the temptations coming from my concupiscence. Again, what a bad excuse. Is God not able to assist you, to strengthen you, to defend you against the disorder, the desires of concupiscence as he did for Noah? Noah was a man like us. He had the original sin, like us. And yet he lived in a perfect holiness. He was a just and perfect man.
The Church is uh, preparing us for Lent, which is a time especially dedicated to prayer and penance. And the Church reminds us of the reality of the spiritual fight, fight against the devil, against the world, against our own concupiscence. If we pray and do penance, God will assist us with His grace, and by His grace we will have the final victory. As he mentioned it to St. Paul in the epistle of today, my grace is sufficient for thee. If you find these spiritual fights too hard, look at the Blessed Virgin Mary. For you, for your eternal salvation, she offered her son Jesus to die on the cross. She followed him during the Passion. She stood at the foot of the cross for three hours for you. Do you think it was easy for her to bear all these sufferings? No, of course. It was terrible, but she did, she did it for you. So in time of discouragement, look at her. Talk to her. Entrust yourself to her. And she will give you the necessary strength to carry on. She will lead you to the final victory. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.